Well, hello. Welcome back. We are here with my sister, Madame Macabre. And we're going to do a quick interview for you guys. All right, so I guess first things first. Um, vaping, an outsider's perspective, or an outside perspective, rather. Um, so, do you have any friends that vape? And uh, if you do, how has it impacted you? I do have a friend that vapes. Uh, she actually used to smoke first. I have never smoked or vaped myself, but that's my main perspective on it. My, you know how it's affected my life is having a friend who does vape, and she actually did smoke first. And uh, I guess the impact it's had on me has been generally positive because back when she smoked, I had issues with allergies. I would always get itchy eyes, itchy throat. I would just burny. It was not fun. It would make it hard for me to be able to drive in the car with her, be any anywhere where there's too much smoke because it just had an, an insane reaction on me. And when she switched to vaping, I could get a, pla a cloud of vape just right in my face and I wouldn't even bat an eye, it wouldn't have any effect on me like cigarette smoke did. So it made it a lot easier, at least the effect on my life that it had is it made it a lot easier for me to spend time with my friend because I would not get these nasty negative reactions anymore. And I'm, I'm sure the effects it had on her life was a lot more intense than it did on mine. That's good. That's pretty good. I remember back, I used to smoke a lot of cigarettes as well, and I experienced a lot of the same issues myself. Yeah, someone with asthma, uh, switching to vaping, like, quite literally saved my life. So, uh, if we were to tell you that uh, e-liquid contained, like, 99% hypoallergenic ingredients other than some flavors, would you say that there's any reason for a smoker not to switch to vaping? Not really. Honestly, I think the biggest thing keeping a lot of people from switching to vaping is like a elitist stigma that stubborn smokers have made. It seems like a, a oh, oh, vape bros, I get it, you vape, all the memes and stuff. I, I feel like it's not actually an uncool, uncool thing to do. I think that generally comes from smokers who just, they don't want to stop smoking and they, they might feel a little guilty because they know that vaping is a healthier alternative but they don't want to, so they choose to make fun of it. That way they don't have to feel bad about not switching because uh, that's yeah. not the cool thing. Immature coping mechanisms. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Indeed. So, all right. Now, if you were a smoker, would you feel compelled to switch? I know you're not a smoker. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's, it's hard to say because I've never smoked, but I have to say that based on all the information that's come out about it and everything, I probably would because from from my friend who used to smoke then switched to vaping, like she, literally the only reason she smoked was because the nicotine helped her cope with her stress and anxiety and that was just kind of her thing. And that was the only reason she was smoking. She didn't really care for the smell of it or any of the other stuff. It was just she needed that, that nicotine. Whereas with vaping, you get all the smells and the flavors and all that stuff to it. Plus, you're not putting the uh, rat poison and tar into your lungs. So I, I imagine if I was a smoker, I probably would have just like my friend gone over the other one because I, I don't see any element of actual like smoke smoke being enjoyable. Vaping saves lives. It does. <laughs> How likely do you think it is that these anti-vaping campaigns are? scare tactics and fear-mongering from big tobacco and lobbyists and the like. I think it's pretty ridiculous, but uh, honestly, all this stuff I see in the news about, oh, scary vape, it's dangerous, all these things blow up, it's gonna give you popcorn lung, all this stuff. A lot of it, when you actually look into it, it's very shaky research or the stuff like, oh, well, it, there was a link, a tiny, teeny, infinitesimally small link but as soon as, as soon as they found that link, they replaced that ingredient with something that doesn't do that. So it's literally not there anymore and you're just scaremongering. All this stuff, it's scare tactics from people who I think don't understand it. They don't understand what it's made of, what it does, all this. And behind it, I really do think Big Tobacco has a lot to do with it. Because you know, with the more, the more and more and more people switching to vaping, they're losing all the money that used to be going into cigarettes. I mean, my friend, I keep bringing her up, 
because she's the, the reference point I have. <laughs> But uh, she would spend so much money on cigarettes. It was absurd how much money she would dump into this habit that was like actively killing her. And now she can literally spend the amount of money she would on like a couple packs to get juice that will last her for weeks. So she's spending a fraction of the cost, not giving any money. And it's, it's terrifying big tobacco because all they care about is money. Mm -hmm. And since a lot, they're losing lots of business, they're gonna do anything they can to kill the competition before it kills them. I don't actually think it's as bad as the news. It's, it's kind of absurd watching some of these videos of, <laughs> oh, but what about little Timmy? Mm. Oh no. I feel a lot of these uh, scare campaigns come from the fact that uh, Big Tobacco has tried to buy out the companies, but they're not willing to sell. It seems like there's a big movement of independent like businesses, small businesses and creators. Like I, I haven't seen that with tobacco because you've got these super conglomerates that have taken over everything. But it's interesting with vaping because you see small mom and pop style shops everywhere. And it's like this new movement with small companies. I haven't really seen that many major corporations that have been able to make a foothold. There's even a niche for people that like myself create their own vape juice, which is very cost effective and can produce a quite a large supply. It's a really good route to go, I would say. In the proper steeping, you can get the same quality of flavor than you would from store-bought yeah. juice. Most definitely. What do you think about the FDA's argument that vape that the vaping industry is marketing to kids? Would, would you agree or disagree? I'm gonna have to disagree because I have never once even seen an ad for vaping to begin. <laughs> How can you be advertising to the children when there are not advertisements? Where where are these advertisements? Like, I mean, watching watching the big kids blow clouds of vapor is supposed to be. Is that the advertisement? I don't. I, guess. I don't know. Hashtags on Instagram. Are there I I can't see it being intentionally advertising towards children when I'm not even seeing advertising to begin with. That's kind of, I, I think again, it's more of a scare tactic. One of the one of the points or reasons they have behind that argument is that the uh, the labels appeal to children because of bright colors. Oh, and, and like the candy areas. flavors and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bright colors attract your eyes, so you're gonna go to a vape shop. You're gonna see, oh, that bottle's really bright. I see. That's the first one I see. I mean, well, Makes sense. and they're probably like, oh, well, the bubble gum and the gummy bears and all that stuff. But mm -hmm. if you're going to go down that road of an argument, go down the uh, in the grocery store, the aisle where they have all the flavorful alcoholic drinks. Like, not even the hard liquor, but just like the mixers and stuff. Like, strawberry, mixed berry, coconut. Like, they're bright and colorful. And some of them will, like, when they've got seasonal drinks that have, like, colorful cartoony things all mm -hmm. over them. They, like, there are things out there that use fun advertising that are not meant for kids. Like, you just have to be a responsible parent. Stop putting it on everybody else. You know, you take care of your own child. All you have to do is literally when they, oh, what's that? That looks good. Oh, that's a grown up thing. That's, that's not for little kids. Just as simple as that. Like, if you can control your child and put your foot down, that's, an, that's a grown up thing. Like, literally, it's you can't have that. That's a grown up thing. It's not mean to give boundaries to your child. Just teach <laughs> yeah. them you can't have everything just because you want it. So yeah. be a parent, so problem solved. And yeah, the thing like, most of these vape companies are compliant too, but I feel like if Lost Art and Candy King have to stop using colorful labeling, then Smirnoff should stop making sour pucker mix with bright colorful labels on it too. Or whipped cream flavored vodka. Yeah, why is that necessary? <laughs> And arguably, the candies that these vape juices are mocking could potentially be more deadly in the long run than vape juice. <laughs> and also, if you teach your children how to read, it says on the label of 18 plus. So there's that. Now let's say, if you vaped, what type of flavor would you like to see on the shelves? Hmm. Well, as far as, I've seen already a lot of like candy type things and stuff like that. So I know there's, not any lacking for that. I I think it would be cool if uh, I could mimic different like tea flavors, like align. Like I, I I love tea, especially like the loose leaf stuff and all the nice flavors and all that. It would be really cool if you could recreate some of those flavors and almost like a line of different types of tea. That could be a cool thing. I don't know if anybody's doing that yet. Um, I, there's one brand that does make a, a Earl Grey flavor, and that's one of my favorite flavors, but. 
be Not cool to do a whole tea, line. Yeah, a whole line yeah. would be a really cool idea. And yeah, those would be flavors that probably wouldn't appeal to many kids, if any. <laughs> I know, it's, just, it's tea. How, do you like tea, my child? <laughs> Have a spot? <laughs> you know, it's a bit of crumpet. Maybe yeah. it's a morning read. Hello, puppet. <laughs> so, vaping has evolved quite a bit in the past few years. It's been going on for a little over a decade now, as least, at least as far as the mainstream is concerned, and technology has come strides since then. So do you think there, are, if, if ever, will be a, a, an alternative to vaping itself? A replacement for that kind of thing? Oh gosh, well since I'm not even f really familiar with this stuff to begin with, it's hard for me to imagine. I think the only other leap you could take from here is like, at the grocery store you got like different flavors like canned air. <laughs> Nico. <laughs> there we go. Nico. Ah, oh, that's good nicotine. <laughs> wow. Or yeah, canned water, like aerosol spray water, that's a thing now too. Really? Oh. Yeah. Just in case you need a different delivery system for your water. <laughs> I like my water in spray form. I don't like to drink Hydration. I absorb it through my skin. <laughs> Anything else we'd like to add to this? Or, uh, should we wrap it up? Yeah, I think we got it all covered. So yeah, um, here we are with Madame Macab. We just did an interview, and uh, there you have it. I, I do spooky stories and horror content and stuff like that on my channel, so it's quite a different, quite a different thing. Yeah, two two opposite ends of YouTube meeting for a common goal. We'll put that link down yep. there. Yep, check the description below for Madame Macab's link, and uh, we will see you in the next video. Bye.